My name is Malisha McGregor, and I am a developer advocate with Conducto. So you can follow me on Twitter at Flipped Coding if you're interested in more stuff like this. And today I'm going to talk to you about unit testing your docs. There we go. So before I get started with any presentation, I like to let you all know where I'm going with this. So you can kind of tune in and tune out as you find topics interesting. The first thing that we'll be talking about today is why documentation matters. So what's the big deal behind docs and why are we even having a conference like this? Then we'll talk about code snippets in the docs. So why are those there? Who cares about them? Why do they matter? And the important part, why and how should you keep them updated? After that, I want to take you through an example doc application. So I know some of you might work with the developers or you might be a developer. And personally, it always helps when I see how they're doing things or how I might do things so that when I face a really similar problem, I already kind of have an idea of how to tackle it. Then we'll talk about writing unit tests for snippets. So if you're more on just writing the documentation side, you probably won't have to worry about writing unit tests, thankfully. But for those of you who are developers and might be involved with more of the code activities, this is probably where you'll want to kind of see how things are working. Then we'll talk about including your doc tests in a CI CD pipeline. So the whole point of writing unit tests for docs is so that you get these automated checks. And that's where CI CD comes in. And we'll talk about that. Then we'll wrap up with just a few key takeaways and stuff that I hope you remember from today. Oh, first thing, why does documentation even matter? Well, when you're working with software that you didn't develop, you don't know how it works. Therefore, somebody has to tell you how it works. If there's no documentation behind an API, external developers will have no idea what to do. So this is how you help them figure out how to use your tool. And then on the opposite side, sometimes internal developers change or maybe the roadmap changes. Having documentation helps you keep an internal record of how things work and why things have changed over time so that as you bring new people onto teams and as you move people around teams, they don't have to go ask the one person who's been on the group for the longest how everything works. So when you have internal developers and they're working on the documentation, this helps everyone because the external developers know what to do and internal developers know why things work or it gives them a better place to start with. Then part of being like a software company or any company that has a product that a person needs to learn how to use, if you have the right documentation, it'll give the decision makers an idea if they even wanna try your tool. So when people are going through that initial startup phase or they're about to do a really big redo on a project, there's gonna be some time spent just scouting out different options. The one thing that's gonna help you stand out in probably the most subtle way is your documentation. You'll have this whole marketing team and there'll be campaigns and content pushes and all of this stuff to get people's attention. But once you have their attention, what do you want to show them? You can't just say, hey, we have this cool tool. You need to show them how they can use it with their projects. So your docs are one of the most important places 
that leaders will go to see if they want to try your tool, if they want to even include it on the list of options. So a subtle but very important reason is that. And then to tie in with what we just talked about, your docs give marketing something to work with. So the marketing team is not going to touch the code at all. They don't want to see it. They kind of just want you and the developers to take care of that stuff. They just need the cool parts to get people interested in the shiny tool that you made. So they don't understand why it's so cool that you got your garbage collecting more efficient. They don't care. They just want to know, hey, what would somebody use this for? Your docs should be able to answer that question really fast. Why should somebody bother using your tool? So that's where marketing gets a good chunk of their information from. So keep that in mind. And then, of course, when you can explain how your tool works to other people, it makes you more authoritative. Like people know that you know what you're talking about because they know what you're talking about. So when you have these really good detailed documents that walk them through not only how to use your tool, but kind of why it works the way it does or how certain decisions were made, it gives you more authority and more credibility in the user's eyes. And that is something that documentation does really silently. So a lot of the things that documentation supports the company with, it's not as loud and exciting as writing code and getting out new features, but those features won't matter as much to users if they don't know how to use them. So remember, these are some of the reasons that your documentation matters, but really, you want to make sure that anybody who comes by your website is able to look at your tool and say, oh, that doesn't seem too hard. And that's where code snippets in the docs come in. This shows off how to actually use your tool. A developer sees docs and yeah, it's great if there's a lot of words and yeah, yeah, we care about the history, whatever. But we want to know how does that code work? Like when we go to integrate your tool in our code base, how does that look? Do we have to import it? Is there some kind of download we have to do? Do we need to call an online function or something? Like this is where you can show the actual developers using your tools how to use it and how easy it is. Because most of the time, honestly, developers are just looking for code to copy and paste. That's just how it is. You don't want to have some cool tool you're telling everybody is going to save them so much time and it's going to make their app super performant and you don't have one working code snippet. That is the easiest way to make sure that developers don't look at that ever again. Like, those code snippets are a big driver of the adoption of a tool in the developer community. So make sure that you know code snippets are what developers are looking for. And then again, we expect that stuff to work on copy and paste. If we need to fill in some fields or change some values, that's fine. Just make sure that we know that, like in those specific spots, put like placeholders to say, hey, it's path to file here or something else like your component here. Just guide your users through how this copy and paste code works. They're not going to spend a whole lot of time reading. I'm just going to be honest. I know we're really proud of the docs we make, but developers just want something that they can get through really fast. We want the bare minimum, which boils down to, we want code snippets that you can copy and paste 
and just tweak a little and they work. And that is why when your code snippets don't work, you lose a lot of people. Some developers have this, this tendency to not try tools more than once or twice, just because there are so many available. So you need to make sure that at the bare minimum, your documentation code snippets are flawless. Like, sure, they'll find stuff on Stack Overflow or whatever other forums and communities you have set up. But the main place, the source of truth for how these code snippets should work, should live in your documentation. So make sure that those code snippets are functional on copy and paste or else you start to lose a lot of people that will really help promote your tool and actually push it on to other people. So most of the successful tools right now, especially in the open source world, are the ones that have great docs. You can even point out specific examples like Gatsby has some incredible documentation, Apollo has some great, some great docs. There are some places like Twilio that have just set the bar for how documentation should be. And that is why they get so much consistent business and so many developers talk about them all the time. Their documentation is one of their big selling points. You'll hear people just casually talking about how good they are, even though that's a little weird, but hey, we're all in the same community here, so I think we understand. But now I want to show you just a example doc application. And what this is, is just um, a little bit of example docs from Conducto, where basically I'm hoping that this looks familiar. Let me zoom in a little bit. But basically, this is just some markdown. We have, you know, headers, whatever, regular stuff. This is using Gatsby, and Gatsby has some really awesome plugins just to be the tool that they are. Basically, they have this one plugin that makes it so easy to um, include unit tests for your docs. How it works is you have a separate code file. So this one, for example, is going to be imperative.py. So we just have this little code snippet in this separate Python file. It's nothing that special. It's something that we expect a user to copy and paste, right? But normally what we do, we would have this entire snippet just right here in just inline. See, that's what happens when you try to do live code. It always does something weird. But I'm going to get this one. Or not. Anyways, I think you get where I'm going here. Basically, we usually have these inline code pieces where we have the back ticks and whatever language we're using. And what happens is when this gets compiled, the unit tests aren't going to touch a markdown file. Markdown is just seen as just some text files, basically. So it's going to get skipped every time. But if we take the code out, put it in that separate file, and use one of these Gatsby plugins, you can just embed an entire code file in your docs. Like, that is such a huge deal for developers. We can finally make code snippets and examples with our code and not have to translate them to Markdown. That is incredible because it saves so much time in writing the code snippet. Then you have to put it inside of Markdown. Then you have to kind of play with the format a little bit to make sure it looks right. And yeah. It's just easier when you can take this little plugin, 
put the file name and the code just shows up there. But the main part that this allows is if you notice over here, just in my folder directory, we have this imperative.py file. And the fact that this is a .py means that we can write a unit test to check this particular file every time our documentation is built. So whenever there's an update made to the docs, I'm sure it goes through pretty much the same process as the application, if it's not included in the application. And basically what happens is now you can target the files that are typically associated with Markdown in your unit tests. Like, I really hope you can hear how excited I am about that because when I first found that out, it blew my mind a little bit. You don't have to separately check the code that you use in your snippets and then update that code in the snippet. It automatically happens when you do this. Like if you haven't made the update, it's gonna flag you and tell you, hey, you didn't do that right. So that's how we get to the point where we can write unit tests for our code. I think Next.js has a plugin that's similar to this. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure somewhere you can find a plugin or a package that will help you do this. So that was the example application, and I hope it got you excited because it got me excited. So now we can talk about actually what goes into writing unit tests for snippets. Basically, it's exactly what I showed you in Visual Studio Code. You can write the code as a separate file and import it into your markdown. Like That is so awesome that you can do that now. But having this ability means that your code snippets don't have to live in the same directory as your markdown files. If you want it to, you can put those snippets somewhere along with the application, just so you know that they're getting checked whenever you do your updates. But you can just leave them in the markdown directory and call the unit test from there. Something else that is just so great is that there are no code blocks actually written in the doc. Like you no longer have to go in there, whether you know how to write code or not, and figure out what part of the syntax to update. It will just be in a separate file. And one thing that this really, really helps with is that kind of division of responsibilities for the docs. So not every doc writer is a coder, and that's fine because not every coder can explain how their code works. So what this does, it lets the document person focus on the actual instructions that go into the documents, and it lets the developers focus on what parts of the code snippets need to be updated. That way, there's not one person doing a part that either they don't want to do or they don't feel comfortable doing. Now you have a completely clear division between your document writers and the code that they use in those documents, which again is great because when they make updates to the markdown and the whole application gets run through your pipeline, if there are any changes in those snippets that need to be made, you as the developer will know, and you as the documentarian will know. And over time, this might help both of you develop that other skill. And then something else that you really, really want to make sure when you have configurable code. So we talked about earlier how you can copy and paste. Basically, you want to have those parts that a user needs to update to be highlighted. 
you want to make it really clear for them that, hey, when you copy and paste this code into your application, these values need to have your information. Make sure that that is clearly communicated because if it's not, they'll, they'll probably figure it out, honestly, but they'll be a little frustrated in the process and any little friction that they have with your tool is going to make them talk about it less favorably. So you want to make sure that they know exactly what to change so that that code snippet will work with no problems. And the last thing that a lot of developers will like about this approach is that it's the same as unit testing your application code. So you don't have to do a whole lot of extra work. There's no need to go through each and every document and check all of the code snippets to see if they're up to date. If you take this approach, whenever you make updates to your code, those snippets will also be processed with the same unit tests. And if they don't pass the test, you'll know the exact code snippets that need to be updated. And this is an incredible time saver when you have an application with 100 plus pages of documentation, which is super easy to get to really fast. So when you're able to narrow down those problem areas that need to be updated, it helps your developers stay happy, it helps your documentarians stay happy, and it helps your end users stay, well, honestly, oblivious to the fact that you care this much about them, but they figure it out with time when they start comparing your docs against other people's docs, which I promise you at some point we have all done. So the way that these unit tests really help is that they get included in your CI CD pipeline. So this will get included in your build process, whether it's for the application that you want people to use, or if you have your docs in a separate application. Either way, the tests will be a part of this build process. And honestly, since we do know that the code snippets aren't a functioning part of the application, it's okay if they fail. You just have to be aware that they are failing so that you can fix them. But odds are you don't want your docs to stop your application from deploying bug fixes and feature updates to production. So you might want to run it on a parallel node so that It'll still alert the developer of any issues, but the app will still go through to production. And then something that we're all a little guilty of, sometimes we know things don't quite work. So when they do pop up in the CI CD pipeline, just fix them. Like don't, don't just skip the test, don't go around it. Fix the bugs for your code snippets or else your end users are going to be really unhappy when they try to copy and paste the code that worked yesterday and it doesn't work today. So just go ahead and get it over with. Fix those bugs as soon as you know about them and keep going. Then the last thing, the reason that we do this in the first place, like it sounds like a lot of trouble to go through just to add some test to documentation. But the whole point of it is to use this kind of automation to make your docs easier to maintain. So over time, you'll have different people come on to the docs. You'll have different developers join the team. If you're an open source, if you're on an open source project, you might even have random contributors that have input on the docs and the code snippets. So it's such a time saver when you can just look at the failed unit tests and see which docs really need the attention instead of having somebody comb through 
20 plus pages of docs and hope that they don't miss a little syntax error. This saves a lot of time with the feedback loop between the developers working on the code and the people writing the documentation. It saves time on support issues that come in and users being mad about the product. It just saves time and makes things so convenient later on in the process that it's worth the upfront cost. And just a real quick view of what that would look like in a pipeline. Basically, you have just a regular pipeline. You might build a Docker image, whatever. The important part is in this test phase. So when you go to install all your packages and you're about to build your um, artifact that you're going to deploy to production, when you run the test command, this is where your unit tests for your docs will get executed. And as you can see, that has the potential to block um, a production build. But like I mentioned earlier, if you put this in parallel, there shouldn't be any issues with it. It'll just go ahead and send all of the um, errors back to the developer and continue executing the rest of the pipeline like normal. So I don't want to bore you too much with a lot of code, but I just wanted you to see what that would look like in a pipeline. It adds absolutely nothing. That's the point I'm trying to make. You write a few more very tiny unit tests and it doesn't change anything else because it's one of those easy additions, hopefully. So now we can go ahead and wrap up with a few key takeaways. Remember that your code snippets in your docs are just as important as the code for your application. So the code snippets in your docs represent your application code. If the snippets look bad, people assume the code is bad. Make sure that those are staying up to date. And remember, nobody can use your APIs without good documentation. I'm sure we can all think of an example of documentation where it was there, but that was about it. It was about as helpful as those forms you find from 2002. Basically, you want to make sure that your documentation can be used by anyone with the prerequisite knowledge and they can get up and running really fast without any support issues, without having to figure out a whole lot just on their own. Your doc should basically give them everything that they need. And again, it, it sounds like it would be a lot of extra work, but if you already have automated tests running, which I know that those projects do, then it's not too difficult to add a few more lines just to unit test some docs. We know that those code snippets aren't crucial to anything. So as long as they're returning the right values or whatever response they're supposed to send back, that is a good enough check. And the big one, you will stop so much confusion if your docs are just good from the beginning. Yeah, users will let you know when your code snippets are out of date, but you really don't want to depend on them to tell you when things need to be updated. Because if they have to tell you that, it's probably coming in the form of some support issues, and then there'll be this mad dash to update the docs, and they still might not be right. But if you do this little bit of upfront work, it just makes things flow so much smoother and users are happy, document people are happy, developers are happy. That's what we want. And that is all that I have for today.